All right. Thanks, Monty, for joining me and Hermione on this call. Now, you're obviously in India for the road safety series. Um, I mean, how did that come about? Yeah, I think it's, uh, you know, Sachin Tendulkar is the ambassador for it. And, uh, you know, infrastructure and road safety is a, obviously a big issue in India, you know, with, with the way that we can see, you know, the chaos that there is on the roads, but everyone seems to sort of let everyone through. It's actually India itself, isn't it? It's yeah. disorganized, chaotic, but everyone just works together. You kind of think, you know, how do they do it? And uh, I suppose that's probably one of the reasons why I think India produces one of the sharpest minds in, in, in the world. You know, you look at... Uh, Indian Desabora, you know, look, uh, Kamala Harris, she's uh, from Indian background. The CEO of Google is from India. And I'll probably say it starts from road traffic because it's so chaotic, but the mind is very sharp. All right. <laughs> and Monty, you as well. You're Indian origin. Come on. You're sharp yourself. <laughs> well, uh, thank you for the compliment. <laughs> and uh, I mean, how's quarantine going? How long do you have to quarantine in uh, India right now? You're in Raipur, aren't you? Yeah, I'm in Raipur, so um, uh, uh, I, I'm here for like, I think we're going to, another couple of days, tomorrow, tomorrow evening, we should be, uh, you know, back out and, and do normal things. Um, we, we, we have to wear this like watch uh, on our right hand as well, so it detects us where we're going, we're not allowed to get out of the room, so it, it's really uh, a very sophisticated system they have in India, um, it's really good. Yeah, how did um, your invitation to play actually come about? Yeah, it was, um, uh, you know, uh, my good friend Away Shah kind of got in touch with me and he said, you know, do you fancy, you know, playing in England Legends? And uh, I, I, I looked at the temperature in Raipur and it was 35, 37 degrees and it was a straight yes when I looked at the weather conditions compared to what, what it's like in England right now um, and possibly any excuse to get away from, you know, attending lectures or doing university work, uh, I, I, I happily, you know, said yes to it. I would have done exactly the same. <laughs> um, so you're playing under KP, you played under him before. What would you say, like, what's the best thing about him and his leadership style, do you think? Yeah, he's just, uh, he's, he's a fighter, he's a gutsy cricketer, you know, when, when, when it's a tough situation, he, he rebattles that situation. And he's that type of cricketer where, you can feel his confidence when he's at his top of his game. You know, he would enter the stadium as he walks to the pitch. It's like everyone just feels his confidence. You know, he feels his confidence, you know, the whole stadium feels it. And that was his strength, you know, as a cricketer, I would say. You know, there's not many cricketers around the world where you see him live. You can feel the guy's confidence. Kevin Peterson, yeah, this guy, he's got supreme confidence. Uh, Monty, you know, you've played with KP quite a bit. I just wanted to know if there's any story or anything you remember he told you during your playing days that just sticks in your memory. Yeah, he said to me, you're a good runner. He goes, you're a good runner. You're a good, good running partner. We used to do a lot of running together. We used to fitness, do the yo-yo test. I would always compete with him. And in a way, I kind of pushed him in a way. But I, I used to like be third or fourth, you know, like uh, he, he'd always beat me. But he, he was very, very fit, good runner. And uh, yeah, I guess... Uh, I enjoyed bowling to him in the nets. He used to smash me out of the park. And <laughs> I remember when, uh, <laughs> um, uh, I remember uh, actually when we were struggling during a you know, Sri Lanka test series, I think it was, we, we, we didn't do very well in the first test. And everyone just said to take your pads off, you know, and, uh, and, and, and bat with the bat, not with your, um, with your pad. And he was just, just brilliant. You know, every ball he would hit me, he would, feet positions were magnificent. I got so annoyed. I thought I'm going to just go ball fast at his legs, you know, just to hurt. You know, I couldn't like, and, and he was still battle that one out. And it was just a great, you know, that, that was the, you know, that's, that's what you do amongst, you know, like teammates, you, you push each other and you have fun. And he was brilliant. It was, it was a great skill. And, and I really, really enjoyed sort of bowling to someone without their pads. So yeah. I guess you're looking forward to playing with him, not against him. Yeah, it'll be good fun. You know, it'll be, it'll be a lot of fun. I think there's a, there's a lot of great memories there. And, uh, and and there's some other cricketers here as well, you know, like some Matthew Hoggard, who I've played a lot with. He used to always say to me, you know, bounce, bounce, bounce at the, you know, when I, when I used to be uh, in, in my run-up at mid-on. Um, that was a lot of fun. And uh, and Brian Sidebottom, you know, uh, he, he was brilliant. I remember he took seven for 42, I think, uh, at Napier when I played, you know, test match at New Zealand. Bowled really well. It was just, yeah, brilliant. 
Yeah, and you're going to be playing alongside some legends as well as against some legends. One of them being Sachin Tendulkar, who was your first international wicket. Are you looking forward to seeing him and reminding him that he was your first international wicket? I probably won't remind him. I think that's probably the <laughs> last thing I want to do. But I think uh, I, I, I maybe I maybe just uh, you know try and just sort of uh, um, you know just just say actually you know probably be nice just to have some Zoom chats you know once once in these lockdown that that be something that would be nice to do. But I think he's uh, he's obviously a great ambassador for cricket and sport and. Um, and, uh, and, and it'd be just brilliant to, uh, you know, see him again, yeah. Yeah, and, you know, uh, you're obviously playing against some legends like we spoke. Uh, who, who, outside of, obviously, Sachin Tendulkar, who are you looking forward to meeting the most or playing against the most? Yeah, look, I, I quite like, you know, obviously, Brian Lara, like his graceful approach. He's a, he's a real nice guy as well. Tino Best is another, you know, good friend of mine who's uh, playing for the West Indies team. Um, uh, and there's, I, I think, there's, I think you, you Brad Singh is going to turn up. So, uh, gosh, he used to hit me for some big sixes. Um, <laughs> yeah, I didn't like bowling to him. <laughs> yeah, he would just like a fly, just swap me into the stands. Uh, was, uh, yeah, wasn't an, to be honest, wasn't an enjoyable experience. Um, and then, yeah, I think the Bangladesh are turning up. They're going to be quite a, a dangerous team. And then we've got South Africa. Um, you know, they, they, they'll be good as well. Yeah, and obviously you're all playing in a new stadium in Raipur and they're expecting crowds at 50% capacity as well. So you're looking forward to playing in front of crowds again? Yeah, that'd be really good, you know, playing in front of crowds. Um, uh, you know, watching... Uh, we, haven't done, we haven't played for, for a long time in front of crowds. So like 50% capacity, yeah, it's going to be fun. It's going to be uh, it's something I think everyone's really excited and looking forward to. And what would you say is, you've played a lot of cricket in India yourself. So what would you say is your favourite part about playing cricket in India? I think it's, uh, it, it's, it's just the crowd, the atmosphere. You know, there's a real, you can, there's a real, you can feel that it's, it's a religion, you know, in this country. And, um, you know, they would want to win at all costs. You know, India just love winning in this country. You know, there's obviously a debate about the pitch right now, but no one cares. Day one, day two victory, day five victory. As long as India win, that's all that matters to the Indian fans. That kind of takes us nicely onto the, the India-England test series going on right now, which we can't not talk about. Um, what do you think about the chatter around the pitch? Do you think the criticism's fair? Well, it's a pink ball test match. I, I think you're allowed to have a one-off sort of you know, test match like this. Um, I suppose we've had, you know, 15 wickets fall in a day in 2017 when England versus South Africa, you know, and that was a green pitch at, pitch, um, at Trent Bridge. Um, so I think um, there's been another, you know, when India played you know, New Zealand, in New Zealand, you know, both of the test matches lost for two and a half days. And, and I think the point what the Indian players are saying is no one really made a big issue about the green pitches, but why are people making an issue about the spinning pitches? So um, I think it's just... You know, it's we've seen three and a half day pit, test match, you know, pitches at uh, at Chennai. So I think, in my opinion, um, you know, India being, I think, probably one of the one of the strongest sort of you know governing bodies in in cricket. You, you probably think that you know maybe they should uh, you know sh they've, they've qualified for the Test Championship. So um, this is probably a great opportunity. You know, maybe maybe to produce a flat pitch, but. I know what the Indian fans are like and Indian sport, you know, if they know one way to win, then they will just keep producing a spinning track because they just, here, yeah, they love winning. They absolutely love it. It, it. It's like the best thing for them. It's like, you know, like a, like a football fan who loves his football team and, and they just win. It, it is. They're just so passionate about winning. So um, I, I, I probably expect another turning pitch. Yeah. And, you know, uh, with the pitch as well, the last game, which ended in two days, Ashwin got to his 400 test wickets. And he, like you said, he, Indian cricketers have been upfront about saying, you know what, we don't complain about the pitch when we go to these countries. Why are people complaining about the pitch now? And Ashwin's been the chief leader of that conversation. And um, when he got to his 400 wickets, Yuvrat Singh tweeted him congratulations. But then Yuvrat Singh went on to say, if Anil Kumble and Harbhajan Singh played on these pitches, they would have 1,800 wickets between them. 
So like, do you agree with that statement? I mean, not obviously that was an exaggerated number, but do you think the pitches are helping the spinners a lot more now than they were back in your time? I, I definitely the case. You know, I I I remember the two like from two thousand to two thousand and ten. There was a lot of pit, a lot of test matches were going to the fourth day, you know, fifth day, and then suddenly there was a shift in producing really turning pitches. So yeah, look, um, you still got to find a way of taking wickets on these turning surfaces. But um, you know, when you got Joe Root taking five for eight, um, you kind of like think, you know, even Joe Root said that, oh, um, if I'm taking five for eight, you know, there must be something wrong with the pitch. You know, it must be a bit too spinner friendly. And you know, um, it, it kind of reminded me of club cricket, really. Um, you know, when the pitch is just turning, mm-hmm. you're sort of chasing hundred versus a hundred, really. And uh, it, it kind of yeah reminded me of that uh, the sort of test match. What are your thoughts on Root as a spin bowler? Look, I, I think he's he's a smart cricketer. You know, he, you see when he bowls, he thinks like a batsman. Um, you see how he varies his pace. He doesn't really think about it. And I think um, you know he's that's what makes him so successful as a as a, as a cricketer because he, he does a bit of bowling. You know, he's he like even when he got his um, you know debut hundred, he was reverse sweeping at Headingley. You know, he reverse swept. You know, to get to his hundred. So. You can tell he was just so um, creative and innovative and, and able to adapt to different situations. And, and that's what makes him a smart cricketer. And even when he's bowling, you, can't, you can see that the way he bowls. He's, a, he's an astute cricketer. Now, I was going to ask if you think then it's a case of just the England batsmen falling behind. Like, what do you think they're doing wrong? Yeah, look, it's very difficult. This is a very young team and um, it's difficult to develop your skills on turning pitches, which they're not, they're not used to, you know, this type of turn and even if it's in England it turns maybe quickly off a slightly um, shorter length which you can you know you can adjust but you know these are like you know full balls and they turn quite sharp so it's um it's a test of their character you know I remember playing you know certain tours where um you know you're not enjoying the tour but you've got to find a way of like you know, showing some good performance and this is not about technique or how fit you are it's it's about your um, your mental capacity and, and and your mindset and 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 your attitude towards right you know am I going to give up on these turning surfaces or I'm going to find a way to score and and show some show some fight and I think that's what these young the young batters you know they must must show some resilience because it would help them you know selectors will will think that when when the going got tough you know some of these batters you know stood up so uh, this is a perfect opportunity in the fourth test match to, to, to show how, how how tough and resilient they are. Yeah, and uh, of course, with the test matches, we've seen Ben Folks keeping behind the stumps and a lot of praise has been rightly given to him for his wicket-keeping ability. As a bowler, how good is it to have, you know, having a keeper you know will not let anything go by him and at the slightest opportunity will create a chance like he did for the Rohit Sharma stumping? Yeah, look, it's great to have a keeper like that that creates these kind of chances. But also, you don't want to get into that habit of thinking, oh, the keeper's going to create me, you know, half chances to get me a wicket. Mm -hmm. Because then you rely on that. And then suddenly, like someone like Jack Leach, he should take them sort of wickets as bonuses and think, right, how am I genuinely getting the proper wickets? Am I getting them out without without the skill of Ben Folks? Or am I, you know, I can, I can, that's just bonus wickets. And I think sometimes, them sort of wickets um, kind of sugarcoats the performance a little bit. Yeah. Um, you know, and, and I think he should be, he, I think by now he needs to be a bit more consistent in his line and length. You know, the Indian players know that, yeah, he'll bowl well, but then he's going to give one short, you're going to bowl full at some stage or release the pressure. And that's the difference between the Ashwin and Aksha Patel and Jack Leach. You know, yeah, you're going to take wickets as a spinner, but it's holding on to that pressure. And Ashwin obviously does that brilliantly. Yeah. And, of course, bowling's a lot about rhythm, right? And how does one, like, for example, Jack Leach, sometimes you, with the first, uh, not the first, the second test, you could tell he was a bit out of rhythm, especially when Rishabh Pant started taking him for all those runs. What, how, how would you as a bowler get back into your rhythm when, you know, someone's trying to upset it as a batsman? Um, I think you got to take your time out. you got to have these plans. you got to play mind games um, as well. Um, Halfway down the pitch, if I was Jack Leach, I, I don't think he has my sort of you know personality, but I would halfway down the pitch, 
look at Virat Kohli and, and then speak to the keeper and Joe Root and say, look, this is the field that I want. Impose myself. Say, this, is, this wicket is my space, not yours. You've entered in my arena and I'm going to get you out. It's not the other way around, you know? Mm-hmm. And it's little things like that, you know, imposing yourself on the, on the batsman, you know? And I, I don't think Joe Root, I think, I think Jack Lee is quite like that. <laughs> you always speaks to like, like so Ben Stokes and all this and consoles, but I'm, yeah, everyone's a different personality, but that would shake up, not the batsman, but I would think, well, I don't feel so comfortable. He's trying to step on my space and he's not allowed to do that and maybe get him to play a bit more aggressive, you know, and you never know, you just get a wicket through that. Yeah, and I don't know if you watched the test, the documentary there about the Australian cricket team, where basically one of the episodes was based around not talking to Virat Kohli or engaging with him because they felt that engaging with him switches on a switch in his head and he starts to up his game even more. And do you think, like, with Jack Leach, obviously we've seen the England team not sledge Virat Kohli at all. Do you think that's a proper game plan they've gone in with? Because he's not scored too many runs except that 150 that he had in the last test. He hasn't had those big scores that you we've come to get used to with Virat Kohli. And do you think that's a proper game plan from Joe Root, Jack Leach and the boys not to engage him? I think it's, to be honest, it's not really a concern for Virat Kohli, you know, if he's scoring runs, if he doesn't score runs. Um, I think his concern is that he wants to remain the captain of this India team. He wants to be one of the, known as one of the greatest, you know, captains uh, in, in world c- cricket with the likes of Steve Waugh, um, Graham Smith. With, you know, Clive Lloyd. So if he's not scoring many runs, it, it's not an issue. I think a captaincy is much more important to him at the moment. And he'll always score runs. He's a great player. He'll find a way. He's got such a great team. He's got, you know, Bright Sharma, who's a, who's a, who's a great, um, you know, is probably the Don Bradman of, uh, of Indian, on, in, in, in Indian services. So, yeah, he's, he's, he's very lucky to have a, such a great team. Yeah, and... With Virat Kohli's captaincy, obviously, after the Australia season, Rahane led India to victory at the Gabba. There was a lot of chatter about, you know, what is, is captaincy the issue? It's always been a talk around the IPL when Virat Kohli doesn't win every season. It's, Gautam Gambhir said it at the end of last season when the IPL happened that no captain goes nine years without winning the IPL and stays in the role. Do you think now the pressure started to mount on Virat Kohli, the captain, not the player, of course, but the captain to start producing results? Well, I, th- I I thought the second test match, he was under extreme pressure. They produced the turning pitch. It was very brave of him if they lost that toss. I reckon England would have won that. That was 2 0, and that was the end of Virat Kohli captaincy. You know, but they took a brave call and they won the toss. And, you know, they obviously, I think as a collectively, as a team, the Indian team, I think they want Virat Kohli to remain as captain. And they, and they did their best, you know, did a great job in doing that. Um, so, um, you know, it, I'm sure Virat Kohli, you know, I think he needs to win a T20 tournament, either T20 or the World Cup. One or the other, he needs to win or get to the final. And I think if, if one of them, he doesn't, you know, let's say, I, I would probably say he needs to win, you know, he needs to win a trophy. And if he doesn't, I think that'll be it then. I think they'll get rid of him and then they'll bring in a new, new captain. And... Obviously, Rohit Sharma, his counterpart, especially in the one day in T20 side where he's vice captain, he's been the guy who's been winning all the trophies with his side, the Mumbai Indians, and he's been a key part in creating that team. Do you reckon that the selectors will then, if, like you said, he doesn't win the World Cup, is Rohit Sharma the go to man now for, like, if for the future, not for the future, but for the next couple of years at least, leading into the next T20 World Cup, which is the following year? Well, that, that, that could possibly happen, but it depends on the batting. You know, I think Virat Kohli bats really well in T20 cricket and there's always an issue of Mumbai batsmen versus Delhi batsmen. Mm-hmm. You know, in the, in the past sort of 10, 15 years, you know, Mumbai's produced probably one, some of the greatest you know, batsmen um, we've ever witnessed in world cricket, but that sh- shift has changed. You know, we've got like Virat, um, Virinda Sewa come there, Richard Bunt, um, Virat Kohli. So now they're saying that actually um, the great batsmen come from Delhi, not from Mumbai anymore. So uh, it's, it's always been that debate, um, you know, um, but it's, it's something that um, it is probably good for Indian cricket. Yeah, and Monty, you as a bowler, if you had to choose to bowl to one person, say you're playing a T20 game now, you had to choose either bowling a Virat Kohli or Rohit Sharma, what, who would you go for? Who would you rather bowl at? I don't mind. I'll get both of them out. <laughs> 
Knew he was gonna say that. And obviously, there's the fourth test coming up in Ahmedabad. We don't know how the pitch will play out. But what are your predictions for the fourth test? What do you think England need to do to win that and draw the series? And what do you think India need to do differently? Look, I'll be, I'll be honest with you. If Joe Root score runs, if he scores 100, I think England got a chance. There's too much reliance on, on Joe Root. And, um, you know, India, India will probably produce another turning pitch, you know. And like I've seen it in India, I've been asking every Indian fan about the pitch situation. And the biggest stakeholders in the game are the fans. And there's over, you know, it's like, you know over, over half a million, I think, you know, over 500 million fans around, you know, in, in India that will, you know, tune in and watch. They say, we just don't care. Produce a turning pitch, India win, we got something to celebrate about. And that is all they're, that's, that's all they care about. And that's the pressure I think people don't understand of the Indian players are under. When they turn out to play a game of cricket for India in India, they're under so much pressure to win that they have to produce turning pitches because the, the fans will just then absolutely turn against the team. So other nations don't experience that level of pressure when they're playing in their own home country. So that's why I think, you know, India will produce a turning pitch and, and they'll keep winning. Yeah, and last, lastly, of course, after this test series ends, the five T20s leading in, obviously, because of the T20 World Cup later in the year in India, the five T20s. How important is it for England and Owen Morgan side to use those five twenties to five T20s to figure out the best team combination leading into that World Cup? I think the five T twenties um, would be an opportunity to see some of the players, you know, to see how they're going to do well. I think the real one will be in the IPL. You know, some of these young, some of these players who are playing in the IPL. I think the planning and the preparation would start obviously taking place. But I think um, that's why they've they've had a, a, a policy of the players that are resting are the ones in the IPL. You know, the likes of Ben Stokes, Josh Butler, Owen Morgan, Jofra Archer, Ramon Ali. And they're going to be, I think, the key. They're going to be key players um, in England, you know, if they can win in, in, in India. Yeah, of course. Uh, you know, you mentioned the IPL and the England. That'll be the key. Of course, England are due to play a test match around the, towards the end of the IPL. And the England Cricket Board announced that, you know, the players are likely to miss the first test if they reach the playoffs for the IPL. Do you reckon that's with an eye on the T20 World Cup and under other circumstances it wouldn't happen? But because it's around the T20 World Cup, is in that country they want their players to get as many games in India as possible? Yeah, look, I, I suppose it's the first time I'm on the World Cup, 50 over World Cup. So this is the strongest, you know, white ball cricket team we've seen. So I think they, they know that, um, you know, this is their best opportunity to, to, to win the T20 World Cup by, by giving their players maximum exposure in the IPL. And I think it's the right decision. Um, and, and, and I think that's, that's what they want. They want, you know, the England players to actually get the maximum opportunity and, and, and they can report back to the likes of Owen Morgan, who's, who's a brilliant, um, you know, brilliant, brilliant tactician, brilliant, you know, great captain. And I'm sure he, he, he will know, you know, from each ground, you know, um, how to win and, and, and where, you know, they would lose the game as well. Thank you, Auntie, and I really appreciate you joining us. Uh, I don't know if Hermione has any more questions, but for me, I think you've answered everything. I think you covered everything for us. Um, and yeah, I just want to say best of luck for your own series coming up, Monty. Yeah, best of luck, okay. Monty. Look forward to watching you play again. Okay, thank you very much, guys. And uh, we'll, we'll, yeah, we'll chat soon. I'll, I'll probably connect with you on the Zoom calls during the lectures. Yeah, we'll do. Okay, cheers, mate. Thanks a lot. Yeah.